Hey guys, this is Martin from Bug Bounty Service again. And today I'm going to show you some application slash business logic vulnerabilities, which are quite common. Um, the problem with these vulnerabilities is particularly that a lot of the automated scanners do not find them <clears throat> because as the name suggests, it's application business logic related. So it needs like a researcher or someone who understands the application in order to um, exploit that, right? So um, first and foremost, I have two tabs open here. Basically, I'm using PornFox. PornFox is like a virtualization, uh, free virtualization software. So I can basically mimic two clients. And one here is um, a normal user. And then I'm logged in here in the red one on the admin account as well. Now, whenever I do a request, like, for example, let me refresh this page, it will show up color coded here in yellow. So that means that's for, for me as a researcher, it's, it's easier to distinguish where the request came from. Um, so this is this is like the client browser and then the red one, for example, if I refresh the, the, the red one here, um, you will see that in in Burp as well. That's that's from the from an admin account. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm heading over to the client account and I'm, I'm booking an appointment, right? Like this is a medical website. So I'm going to make an appointment and then I fill uh, in some data here, right? Like so. Um, just just uh, to prefill the form, a phone number, an, an email ID, ID uh, date of birth. So okay, so I'm I'm going for for an appointment here, effectively, right? And select the slot. When it's good, no allergies, and then I book this appointment. And then what you immediately see is you get an appointment ID, and this is a GU ID, which is quite cryptic. So from a security researcher perspective, I already think, oh, well, this is probably not brute forceable, right? Like this is, it's not a numeric ID or any of that. Um, and then as a user, I can then manage my appointment, right? So I go here, manage the appointment, and I put in my appointment ID, which I just copied out, retrieve that appointment, and then I, I have my appointment retrieved here, right? So this is this is basic functionality. So um, but from a from a from a security researcher's perspective, I'm I'm always thinking, hey, um, is there if I cannot brute force the GUIDs, maybe they're using integer values as well, right? Like maybe they are. Uh, I can I can modify it to that extent that it's actually like a, an integer numeric value or something like this. And of of course, I could start brute forcing this in in, in Burp. Um, if if I wanted to, but because let's say this is a penetration test or something and I have access to the admin portal, right? So in the admin portal, what I can do is, for example, I can check here all these kind of appointments. Let's refresh this real quick. There's the, the appointment I just put in. And then if I click on those, I get the details for for each of these appointments, like the name and the address and, and all, all the details. So John Smith, uh, Jane, Okay, so I just click through them, Melissa, like just the first three, right? And then if I head over to Burp and look at these requests, those were those three, I immediately see a difference here. I see that it is using an integer nu numeric ID, right? It is not this kind of cryptic GU ID, which the user sees. Um, it's using something different here. And you can immediately see this, that um, these numbers here, are different than the, than the GUIDs. See that? Okay. So what I also see, if I scroll through them quickly, I see that the five six nine one stays consistent. So the fir first four digits stay cons consistent, and that is already like very interesting because effectively that tells me that only the last four, only the last four of these digits change, and they really uh, distinguish the the specific user, right? And so what can I do with this now, right? Like, so for example, I could now head over to this post request um, here. Well, this, this was my sign up request. This is the, the post request I made to retrieve the appointment as a user, right? So if, if I look at this, I can see here, I did a post and it used my cryptic ID, right? So I sent this to repeater. And then now let me try something. So I know, for example, that if I click this one here, I should get the numeric ID. 
So let me check this. And the numeric ID is this one here. So I take that, put it into repeater, and now I try to replace this value effectively, right? With that numeric and see if the server still takes it. And I gotta get a success. And now this is this is very dangerous because even though the developers put protection mechanisms in place so that you use GUIDs, which are not brute forceable, it is actually also taking integer values. So it accepts both. It accepts both. And when you put an integer value in, it effectively um, gives you the, the cryptic ID, so to, so to speak, it gives you that back, right? So this is a vulnerability. This is a vulnerability and it's, it, it happens surprisingly often that you and can actually just, um, if you see a GUID, you can just introduce an integer value. And I could take this further to the next step. I can send this now to, to, to Intruder. And because I, I know that only the first four digits are uh, or the first last digits are actually changing i could now run like a brute force attack on just those right because i know that the first four stay consistent so i add this here and then i can go to my payloads tab select numbers right and then i want to start at zero 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 all the way to nine 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 with a step of one which is ten thousand combinations it always shall be a minimum of four digits and a maximum of four digits and no fraction digits at all, right? So this, this will be my, my payloads. And then I start the attack. And then effectively, I can now browse through them. I could use grab functionality and things like that to actually retrieve the appointments. And then as an attacker, I get a full list of valid appointments. And this is then obviously something where I, as a malicious attacker, I can then retrieve PII information from other users, right? Like, so if I, if I have their ID, I can basically use the management portal here um, as a user and simply go here, manage appointment. And, oh, it's temporarily available, unavailable now. That's because I'm running the, 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 the brute force. So be careful with, with the brute forcing always, right? Like, because... Um, it can break things, so you need the authorization of the client, um, whether that's permissible. But effectively, once you run through this, um, you effectively can get other people's information. And that's, that's simply, well, that's an IDOR first and foremost, but it's also related to the fact that I can introduce um, integer values instead of the scripted GUIDs. So I stop this here now because um, I think you you get the point. And that was just like to give you an introduction about the business logic vulnerability. Have a good day and see you in the next video.